And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us straight from Valoris Games, creator of Valor the Heroic Roleplay System, now kickstarting for a for for a brand new print run, which it which has managed to get which has managed to get past its six thousand dollar goal with seven point one k at the time of this recording. Congratulations for that! Thank you. The one and only Liana McKenzie. How are you doing tonight? Hello, I am doing great. <laughs> Apologies if I scared if I scared because of the intro, but this is how I open things up around here. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Like I said, like you're you're a Midwestern boy. I know how I know how you folks do. <laughs> Just don't make any Oli and Lena jokes. I've heard them all. I'm not that a nerd in Midwest culture. I just I've gone out enough to know how things work. Oh, probably wouldn't surprise you at all if I if I said that I if I said that I know my way around a hockey puck. Certainly not. Even yes, if, but again, that's like most Midwestern boys that I've met thus far. Even even if um even if I, I was given I was I was I was the closest thing to a goon. <laughs> I was given the given the instructions of Hey Melger, you see what that you see that guy with the puck over there? Yes I do, sir. I don't want to. Fix that. Okay. <laughs> you know, and then I then I go out and run him over. It's called an occupational hazard. Sounds very hockey. <laughs> but I'd like to open with the humble beginnings of a sort. Oh, absolutely. Because uh, I always like to open with everybody's origin story. Because everybody's got out my tragic past. And they, I've been doing this long enough to to the point that there's that there's nothing that anybody can anybody can say about uh, about tragic pasts or hum, or humble origins or that or that guy or that GM that can surprise me. <laughs> It's not too bad. It was just mostly me trying to do <laughs> do with three point five. What three point five was never intended to do. <laughs> so, how did? But I'm guessing. I'm guessing three point five was your gateway drug. Yes and no. So I when I was when I was little, um, I would make tabletop games kind of by myself. Uh, I say little, but I think it. I kind of started in middle school and mm-hmm. well into high school when I started testing them. Um, I I was a big fan of JRPGs. I was a big mm-hmm. fan of like the Dragonlance books growing up. Mm-hmm. So kind of from those games, I sort of sussed out the concept of a role playing game before I'd ever actually touched a commercial project. Mm-hmm. So God, I must have made like fifty different games. I, I started testing them in high school early on. Um, and my friends kind of just ran roughshod over my system and broke it immediately, uh, as is uh, as is to be expected from a new designer. Uh, and then I found out about this wonderful thing called Dungeons and Dragons, which my which my father had very intentionally kept from me because he once saw some LARPers in the park and thought and associated them with D and D and didn't want his kids to be involved in anything like that. Did mm. not necessarily work out that way. Um, so I convinced him to let me buy D and D books and then he finally relented. Uh, I picked up myself up a big set of Dungeons and Dragons 3.0 books for Christmas one year. Cause I got a lot mm. of money. Um, and then, um, you know, kind of tried to start playing the game. Uh, didn't really learn it especially well. Uh, and then 3.5 came out the next year and I didn't want to replace them. So everyone told me, you know, Oh, it's basically the same thing. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll just stick with my books uh, up until college when they're like, yeah, no, you need the new books. Uh, the old books don't work anymore. <laughs> Whoever said that it was basically the same thing was um, was pro- probably as a probably as a br- a bridge in Brooklyn. I, they'd want to sell you. It's. I think I I saw some of the marketing copy about it where it's like, well, three point three point five uses a lot of the same mechanics is 3.0 but it 
you know, I use, you know, it's the same rules and it's just like updates and stuff like that. And, you know, me having already spent over a hundred dollars on these friggin' things, I was like, okay, it works. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure they will not make that same mistake with D and D with the new D and D. I'm sure. hundred <laughs> percent backwards compatible. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? Of course I'm serious. I'm always serious. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I could. I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. I'm. I've been. I've been looking at the whole one D and D thing, and my and my mind keeps coming back to a couple of things. One, um, there are some people in that company who owe me an apology. Um, <laughs> a ma- and to and two. Um, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it, because apparently, the, apparently, they completely forgot about the about the last time they tried making a virtual tabletop, mm-hmm. and the whole Gleamax thing. I was there for both oh, of yes. them mm-hmm. to the to the point where I may as well I may as well walk into that office since in Seattle and t- and tell them do not su- do not try and cite the deep magic to me, which I was there when it was written. But as as someone who actually does live in the Seattle area, um, I'm sure I'm sure that they've had they've had occasions like that already. Um, but yes, I'm sure they'll get it right this time. When needs but have faith, right? Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? <laughs> insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again and expecting shit to change. That Mm -hmm. is crazy. Well, with with the D&D is a bit special though because the fans will get very upset if you don't kind of do the same thing over and over again. Oh, I I I know. We can that with 4E. um, I I know and I've been taking the piss out of them for 20 years or 20 plus years over it. Um, especially, especially, especially some, especially some of the stuff that they, that they claim was carried over, it claim, carried over into, into 5e from 4e as, as if, as if I couldn't tell the difference. Um, I'm one of the, big, I'm, one of the I'm one of the like 12 people who liked fourth edition. So, you know, I hope you can count that. I hope you can count me in that list because I guess so, there are like 12 of us. Um, it seems that there's it seems that there's a whole lot more than I than I thought because well there there was that um, there was that four E inspi- inspired game jam a few years ago on itch and mm-hmm. there's been I do some that. and um there there's also there's also how much of four E's DNA is of course carried over into thirteenth age which is fucking great mm-hmm. and the fa- and the fact that some of the five E adhe- adherents that who swore off four E for the longest time, then s- then spent a bit of time studying it in my temple and were like, "The fuck? What was I thinking? Thinking this was the worst thing ever?" And of course, of course, you do have the grogs who who insist who insist that it was the worst ever, and I'm like, um, first off, fuck the grogs. <laughs> Sec- second off, I'll the um- the Grogs Somebody, haven't been happy since first edition, and in some cases, I'm not even sure they were happy in first edition. So, um, like, I I treat I treat the I treat the Grogs the same the same way the same way I treat um, fans of of any of any sport from Boston. They only they only have they only have one mode, and that is bitching. Doesn't doesn't matter doesn't matter what happens, they they will they will be bitching. Yeah, but, that 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 sounds about right. But they but they make a very but all critics have their whipping boys and th- and those are mine because they're it. I was I I have been around I I first got my start with the AD and D second edition black books and there's a lot of stuff from pre three E that I will not go back to. I I have made it very I've made it very clear that anybody who. Insi- insists that Vance, that the Vancean model of spellcasting is perfectly fine should be should be um should be publicly flogged. 
they don't even really hold that anymore in 5e they they they're kind of doing a soft climb down from it it feels like i'm still seeing i'm still seeing spells per day so fuck them <laughs> they'll, they'll get away from it eventually they just have to like do it do it very carefully so the fan base doesn't riot well, for for me for me the I've ar- I've already had a solution anytime I need to break out 5e and that's the spheres system. Or I or well when I discovered a little project called Heavens and Heresies which I've talked about at length on this channel um I can't go back to standard fi- to standard 5e because it actually has a ranger that doesn't suck. Ranger sucking is part of their charm though. Like, you always look at the ranger and ask yourself, so why am I playing this instead of literally anything else? Because you're a glutton for punishment. I mean, some, didn't you, didn't you say, haven't you said beforehand that some people might enjoy, might enjoy pain? I, I did indeed make such a comment, yes. <laughs> but. I don't necessarily understand, but, you know, to each their own. But um, go, but going from going from D and D third D and D third what now? One of one of the from what I recall from my own research and appa- apparently I apparently I didn't put two and two together until until recently. Um, you were responsible for spearheading the Bleach three point five project. That is um, correct. Yes. Uh, did did that just come from just being a fan of Bleach and wanting to do it in? in tabletop form in part yeah so we had been talking about um running a home game of bleach uh because everyone was super big on bleach um so we started putting the system together and then one of the folks in our group was like hey look i found this this other thing that's perfect for it it's called bezo So we played a session of that, uh, mm-hmm. and then I went back to the 3.5 even more fervently, whereas that, that other person was like, well, what? we have Besom. Why are you still working on this? And I'm like, because Besom sucks. Given the, time, given the timeline, I'm going to go out on the limb and say this was probably Besom's second edition. Um, it was, it, it might've been third. Um, if it was, if it was third, I completely, I completely understand. Um, third's kind of been the, kind of been the black sheet because of how it overcomplicated a lot of stuff with, mm-hmm. with a system that was meant to be simple. And yeah, cause it was, the, it was the tri-stat and it had, it had a lot of very specific ability fields for like different kinds of attacks you come and see in, commonly see in anime. Like yeah, I think that, it has specific rules for like fin funnels and for like. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds like it. Um, third edition is the black sheep at, because it really felt like it was try. It felt like a poor man's GURPS, and <laughs> GURPS is 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 it's it's its own problem because. Hey, you want to build up a character in GURPS? Well, let me break. Let me break out the. Let me break out my crusty ass TI eighty three that I haven't used since high school because that's what I'm gonna need for for your goddamn sailboat. Gur- GURPS is a very impressive system, is the way I like to say. Everybody, ke- people keep telling me that GURPS is the only one I need because of what you can do with it. To which I always say, it's a free country, and you are free to be wrong. Yeah, GURPS is, so, my, my wife had actually played GURPS, um, and, uh, she switched over to Valor pretty much immediately. One, one, because, you know, she, uh, she liked me, so, you know, I guess, I, I guess that speaks well for the product, but, um, two, uh, she felt that Valor did a lot of what GURPS strove to do, but because we, we tried to really commit hard to our unifying vision, um, which allowed us to simplify a lot of things because we are just doing kind of that anime JRPG superhero action. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, We were able to really streamline a lot of stuff instead of saying, this will do literally everything. And then adding additional complexity layers on top of it at every turn. Now, I'd be lying if I said this, that, um, that, that Valor is my first entry when it comes to anime RPGs. Um, there is a very, a lot of anime RPGs tend to be, uh, tend to be one foot away from universal RPGs. And a lot of them suffer the same problems that I've picked on universal RPGs like GURPS and Hero 4. Mm-hmm. Although, even though both of them have their, have their own issues, but one major problem is what I like to call, is what we like to call choice paralysis or, or also known as swim, damn it. Yeah. And what I mean, what I mean by that is a lot of them say, here's the amount of character points you have. You have to spend these on attributes, skills, advantages, and disadvantages. Go. And it's it's like it's like t- it's like teaching somebody how how to swim by pushing by pushing them off the edge when they're when they're in front of the deep end and just say swim. Okay, now drown less. Can't can't you just drown less though? It's easy. That's what that's what I that's what I had said in my more arrogant days, because I because of how early I learned how to swim. Um. And it's kind of, it's kind of like how how people will say that how people how the person who says that riding a bike is easy has been riding a bike for most of their lives and then has to teach somebody who hasn't been riding it for most of their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the way I see those those kind of systems because when some when when somebody is when somebody is first coming in. And come and coming in for a group, nobody wants to be dead weight. Oh, nobody, absolutely not. Nobody wants to be Nero, either of them. Well, even beyond that, like especially if you're playing an anime system, you want to feel cool. That is the point. Mm-hmm. Of course, the I've um, I've I've always had I've always had my issue. A lot of them, a lot of um, "quote unquote" anime TTRPGs would ma- would make one would make one mistake that I see a lot of people at least I see a lot of people make when it comes to anime, and that's treating the whole thing as a genre. I- I'm willing to let that slide depending on what what year the game came out. Like if it if it's one of the like with with early editions of Besom, especially the ones that came out in the '90s, I give it a bit of slack because. There was so much that people didn't know, and it and getting anime was so ridiculously hard. I'm t- I'm talking the days of tape trading. Oh no, I remember we uh, my cousins and I would go down to the local uh, shady video store and rent the original Dragon Ball Z in its uh, completely unedited form. Mm-hmm. And of. Oh. In fact, it's a miracle that um, Pond Smith's journey into anime had had worked out as well as it did. Mm-hmm. Um, given given when those started, but by the time the early two thousands came around, we started to have an idea about what this anime thing was. So, treat so treating the whole of it as a genre instead of a medium is is kind of the problem. But as years have gone on, we've seen we've seen it where it's. It's start, it, instead of trying to encomp- encompass the whole medium, um, it's become more focused. Um, a few examples that come to mind is like Bounty Head Bebop, which is, well, you can probably guess what that's trying to emulate just from the name. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, and you'll if you if you actually delve into Valor, uh, you oh, will you mm-hmm. will see that we specifically cite shonen mm-hmm. anime as our particular um, inspiration point. Yeah, I can. I was cer- I was certainly able to see that. Um, this and even even more so with the season mechanic that you that you guys have. Yeah, we're very proud of that. It's a good way to split up the tiers, and we also optimize the play for a, a standard level one through five, ending on level uh, ending as you just become level six. Um, at the end of that season, usually will take about 12, 
uh, 12 sessions? Well, it works for me especially because, for one, whenever I do campaigns, I like to I like to format them like I'm formatting a season of a television show. Mm-hmm. It's it's honestly it's a wonderful way to format it, even mm-hmm. even if you're not doing like anime. It just makes a lot of sense. Well, that and a long time ago, I had, I had spoken with um, a guy who you who did a lot of a lot of directorial work for Nickelodeon back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, In particular, he worked on, he worked on a lot of episodes of Alone in the Dark. And he introduced this, a concept to me that stuck with me, and that being a series Bible. Which is, is meant to, is essentially meant to create a degree of consistency with all the storytelling in a given show. Mm -hmm. Um, Characters, their relationships, personality notes, um, all, all in this, all in this one um, document, and that's that's something that I t- that, that I've taken with me when I when I DM. Um, before I before I even bring the before I even bring the players into it, I usually have a primer written out that goes into what sort of what sort of story this is, what sort of what sort of tone, what sort of themes I'm going for. What sort of characters are good ideas to build, and what I what characters are bad ideas to build? Um, one example I always use is when I first ran Lex Arcana, which is a really fascinating system, and I made it clear that even though this is being set in a um, alternate history Rome, this is going to be an investigatory campaign. Do not mm-hmm. make a fighter centric character. I'm not. I can't stop you if you do. But you're gonna be, but you're gonna be checking your phone and and sitting with your thumb up your ass for a good amount of time because you're not going to be able to do a whole lot of fighting. This exactly. isn't going to be that. Kind. Yeah. And sometimes people don't listen. They do it anyway. Then they get mad at me because because I didn't give them enough opportunities to do what to do what they're supposed to shine at. And I and I'm like I told I told you what we were going to be doing. So that's so that's that's a you case of non fop. It is a case of nomfop, NMFP, not my fucking problem. Oh. But one th- the other thing that that I, cer- I certainly find interesting is the is the approach that you ha- that you have with skills and techniques cuz a lot of games when they have skills they they they're either they they e- there's either way too there's either way too many or they're way or they're way too situational, whereas of course with this skills and what would be considered abi- abilities in a lot of systems are can, are kind of in the same frame of each other. They are, and that that was the thing was when we were when we were building the core guts of the system. A major focus for us was customizability. Um, spend, uh, we, we kind of made the determination that we would pack all of the legwork, the harder math, all of that would go into the character creation process mm-hmm. um, to create a very focused, streamlined play experience. Uh, so while we, while we did pack quite a bit of complexity, the technique system, for example, is something I don't honestly see in a lot of other systems. Uh, and it offers a a huge variety of customization and character personalization um, to the point where I've never seen the same character built twice in Valor. Every character Mm -hmm. who's ever built in Valor is unique in some way. Um, But Mm -hmm. because of that, we wanted to make sure that the actual gameplay was a very focused experience that was very simple, um, which we used a lot in how we established our core rules, our core action economy, um, just putting all of those pieces together, um, we what we spent like ten years in development. We spent a lot of time getting that feel exactly yeah. right. Yeah. the other, The other thing that I found interesting is the um, base and active attribute relationship because each of each of the base attributes is is kind of an archetype on, unto itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you if you don't mind, I'd let. I'd like to play a little bit of, I won't say word association, but more of character association. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm going to go through each of the attribute pairs, 
And I'd like you to gi- I'd like you to give me a, a character in either anime or RPGs or or, or something similar that would provide that you th- that in your mind would be a good example of that um, attribute as a representative. Oh, absolutely! This will be this will be fun. I haven't I haven't thought of like the co- like I don't remember who our core inspirations were for each combination. Uh, so let's see if I can remember as we're going through this. Well, there there might there might be new ones that just as well fit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I'll start with strength and muscle. Uh, so strength and muscle are just their corresponding attributes. Did you mean strength and agility? Uh, well, if we, if we go, if we, if we go, if we go with that, if we go with that pair, if we go with that pair, then, it, then there would be way too many combinations. There are if 10 total. So, yeah. um, 10 of, 10 of the base. Yeah. Cause like, so the way it works is strength mm-hmm. feeds into muscle. Muscle mm-hmm. is the rolling attribute. So you're yeah. only ever rolling with your so, muscle stat, but then strength is the core. So given, given that I'll just, I'll, I will just use the. Um, active attributes, just just so that there's not we're not going through a whole grid of combinations. Absolutely, sounds good. All right, so muscle. Um, so muscle characters, and here's the unique thing about Valor too is we mm-hmm. really like we do build it to be combined because of mm-hmm. of that. But if you're looking at muscle specifically, uh, you're probably looking at a character like. I don't want to use this example because it was an inspiration, but because the creator is extremely gross, I'm not going to use it. So give me, give me a chance to think a bit more on, on like who, who would be kind of a quintessential muscle character outside of like Superman, obviously. Um, um, I know some people might say Superman or Goku. I'm not going with, I'm not going with either of those because one overdone and two, um, the until two Superman is the is the god of power creep. Superman and Goku actually do have the same build in Valor, though. Yeah, it's um, just I've I've read way too I've read way too many comics. In fact, I've read way too many anything. But yeah, they both so. And this is funny. Specifically, Goku and the Namekian arc and Superman tend to tend to share the same build. Which is a actually it's a tri stat balanced fighter build of strength, agility, and spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, because Superman tends to be like super, super, super fast as well. Um, yeah. So uh, because of that, uh, you get you get kind of equal parts strength and speed, and then you have the spirit for like the key in Goku's case, or like the laser eyes in Superman's case. Um, Sacrificing a bit of gut since neither of those two characters are like the most durable in the world, but they're pretty they're pretty tough, which strength really bolsters a lot. Yeah. Um, but they're not like Superman, despite being like the man of steel and indestructible, when he's up against something that can actually go toe to toe with him, he's not him being super like soaking damage isn't like the first trait I think of when I think of his like actually fighting people who can fight him. So um. Well, it, well. Let let me let me throw let me throw a name in there, and you you can tell me if this would this this would work. Um, yeah, absolutely. Guts. I just helped someone make a guts build uh, <laughs> two days ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. two days ago, or no, no, three Saturday. Um, so guts build guts is also a tri stat build. Um, he is a uh, he is a strength agility guts balanced mm-hmm. fighter um we chose at that time to focus in on guts um because if you so if you take balanced fighter what it is is you will maximize one of your attributes and then mm-hmm. the other two will be two points below um and mm-hmm. then what balanced fighter does is it brings your active rolling attribute up to up by one if it's not your highest so even though your two kind of secondaries are to um are two points lower you're still rolling at max for everything mm-hmm. so the reason we did this for guts um is because guts like his his big thing is that durability right like guts mm-hmm. is incredibly hard to kill mm-hmm. um so he has he has maximum guts he has nearly maximum strength which means he has 
the potential to be almost maximum health that you can get for a character. Uh, and then the agility as well, because he is very quick. Mm -hmm. um, he's not he's not slow and bulky. Like he can move with astonishing speed. Uh, yeah. So all of that together um, makes what I what I tend to call like the peak physical performance character, and that he has absolutely no magic to speak of, but every single physical capability that he has is fine tuned to its highest point. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're when you're de when you're dealing with ki with killing angels for a living, that's kind of what you have to do. Absolutely. Um. <clears throat> now the next the next pair is agility and and dexterity, mm -hmm. and although it, although it be t although it would be, would be temp would be tempting to use something like Ryu Hayabusa, um, I'd like to I'd like to pivot a little bit. And ask, have you ever seen a film that it's arguably not very good, but it's but it still has it still gave a lot of inspiration, especially for tabletop designers, called Equilibrium. I <laughs> my cousins loved that one. I never got a chance to sit down and actually watch it. The stars There's, never quite aligned, but that's the gun cotton one, right? Yeah, the whole the whole the whole thing with him is. <coughs> Be, is being able to and being able to predict um, the the um, troop placements in it in close range situations and mm -hmm. uh, and adapt instantly. Um, part of that, so actually, that in Valor would be what we call, and this is this is actually a very common stat combination for Valor. Um, is kind of the quote unquote classic rogue build. Um, for us, that would be a dexterity and mind. Because mm -hmm. uh, mind or dexterity and intuition, because uh, mind or intuition has a lot of skills that are based around predicting enemy patterns and then moving out of moving out of the way or getting bonuses to your attack or fainting them, all kinds of other things. So yeah, that would be what we would consider an agility mind build. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the next one is is spirit and aura, and I'm guess. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's a pair that that would be focused a lot for anybody who wants to do a hardcore caster. Spirit and mind both are very caster focused, but they have very different feels. Um, and this is one of the areas that I'm actually hoping to expand a bit more with some later books <clears throat> too, um, to just to give them a bit more individuality than they already currently possess. Uh, a caster who relies on spirit, simply put. A spirit caster is more likely to be a sorcerer or a warlock, and a mind caster is more likely to be a wizard. Um, when you mentioned when you mentioned sorcerer, the first thing that came to mind was orphan. Mm -hmm. Sorcerer, stabber, orphan. Who mm -hmm. I I know of. I've never seen his show. I've seen both of them. The more recent one is significantly closer to the to the original um, light novels. Mm -hmm. And but yeah, like for for a magic character, for example, I think of for example Lena Inverse, um, who mm -hmm. would be actually a spirit mind character, and that she is a full caster, and all of her points go to magic. Yeah. Uh, as far as as far as if I if I had to if I had to use another example when it comes to a when it comes to a wizard, um. This this is this is certainly going to be this is certainly going to be cheating, but I'm going to throw in John Constantine. Right. Okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> Mostly, the main reason that I'd go with him is a with wizards rely on knowledge, and well, he he has to rely on knowledge instead of natural ability because he is a complete bastard. <laughs> mm -hmm. And. And everybody knows it, especially his best frenemy, Papa Midnight. Right. Um. And as to the 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 tricky th the tricky thing is that when it comes to a lot of casters that are seen in fantasy anime, so far more of them fit within the within what a lot of people would consider sorcerers rather than um, wizards. Usually, but not always, and you can you can often tell like the really the big mechanical difference between the two 
is the spirit-based caster casts, um, and they, they're with the way they specialize, they're better at like larger blasts, bigger explosions, more raw power. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas intuition is very finesse based. And you do occasionally have some archetypes who will use that kind of more clever, uh, precise casting. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to say it's, it's been such a long time, but I feel like the wizard in Lotus Wars, for example, whose name I absolutely cannot remember, but I'm looking up right now. Um, Deedlet? Uh, not Deedlet, although sh I think Deedlet would actually be more of a spirit mm -hmm. agility build. Uh, I'm talking about the actual wizard. Because, um, yeah, Deedlet is very quick. She's a fencer and she has magic, um, but her magic is more innate. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she would she would be much more of a uh, a spirit based caster in our typical uh, setup. Slain yeah. that was the name. Mm -hmm. Slain would be a would be a mind caster. Yeah, and now when it comes to the guts and resolve pair, I I I was I was going to I was going to bring up. Um, and any of the characters from from Guren Lagan, but would it be fair of me to say that a agil that want that a character like Beyond the Grave would probably fit a agility gu agility guts build? Uh, which character was that? Beyond the Grave from Gungrave. I have not seen that one. Oh, uh, the, the whole thing the whole thing with him is that he is a uh, he is a um, undead gut undead gunman but not undead in the zombie method more of mm -hmm. more of the fact that he that's through a project called necrolize he's he's able to come back to life but the but he has to he has to essentially siphon and re, and re, and replace the blood in his system periodically that would probably qualify as an agility guts build, just just from what you've told me. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually a character I use for a kind of a more pure guts build that um, from is from an American series, um, Jean from Ruby. Uh, because the thing with guts build is you can use guts uh, and resolve to substitute for your other weaker stats, so long as you reach a certain investment in the battle. Um, so I actually consider Jean to be a a resolve focus build in that he's pretty durable, mm -hmm. but he's not great offensively until he really gets going. Um, it's funny you mention Jean. It's funny you mentioned Jean from Ruby because on the Sunday podcast, there's been a bit. There's been a series we've do, we've done called Reconstructions, which is taking missed opportunities in storytelling in one form or another and. How myself and my co-hosts would would um try and tweak things a little bit to get it to mm -hmm. get a different result, whether it's better or worse is up is up to certain folk. Um, we've we've been staggering it out, but we ha but we are in the process of doing that with um, Ruby. And it's, it's a good series to approach, um, especially with with the unfortunate passing of Monty Ohm. Um, it had a it had a lot of very. It had a hard landing from that, we'll say. And um, Jean was one character that we vet, that we ended up changing quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, part of that is because of my of our belief of not having a comic relief character, but having the idea of comic relief be be something that is played hot potato with, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a big fan of the comic relief character as a concept because it bottlenecks what you can do with that character. And the approach we took with John instead, and I'll pro I will probably get art commissioned of this t of this version of him, is he is he is the team's genius of hard work. Uh, to the point to the point that the, the, the rock Lee, basically pretty much, and because of that, that also that also altered how his how it how his semblance ended up working with our take. Instead of instead of being able to amplify other people's aura, it's more that there's a, that um he is the equivalent of a key sage. 
in that in that he, in that there's a lot of stuff he can do with his aura that uh, that other people can't. He has a lot more control over it. Mm-hmm. Um, whether whether it be whether it be using it as as a ranged weapon because one of my because one of my colleagues wanted to put in an aura slash just so that they could get a Dunbine reference in the project. Um, uh, always fair. Or or you or while some people might use aura to as a shield to protect from damage, um, he is in his case it's a bit more of an overshield to the point where to the point where. It's it's akin to him having a colossus like build, i.e. his oh, i.e. his one of the, one of the gags we put in for for one of the for one scene was that his shield his shield was enough that we, that normal weapons just break when it when they hit. It's like it'd be like punching steel. Mm-hmm. Um, would you still have him as a in that kind of setup? Would you still have him as a guts primary? Ah. Uh- Definitely, probably still defensive. Uh, that would probably be guts, uh, gut strength, mm-hmm. um, especially because gut strength has things like damage feedback. Where if you attack, um, if you attack them in close range, then you actually get hurt a bit yourself. Mm-hmm. So um, the bi- the big difference being because I I in his initial incarnation, I, I considered him to be kind of like a strength secondary or tertiary and that that mm-hmm. is his main attacking stat, but he's not good at it until he gets his resolve online. Yeah. I've a concept that I've always been a fan of is what I like to call as contradictory <coughs> as this may sound the aggressive tank. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the one who's the one who um, has offensive ability, but it's more in, they're the, they're the kind of person who who if we, if you were playing Street Fighter would be a Dudley main. Oh, oh. <laughs> I feel bad. I because I only have so much time, I can only keep up with so many things. And oh. Street Fighter is one of them. I haven't actually played a proper Street Fighter game since Dudley. Three, I think Dudley is a cla- is a is a classical boxer. Okay. And, um, so kind of like what Balrog was. Um, Dudley, I'd, he's he's more of a British style boxer than, and whereas oh, okay. Balrog is more of an American style because of the name switching thing. But that, which is a whole other can of worms. Right. Yeah. Because it um, was like Balrog Vega and all of that. Yeah, because Balrog in Japan is named Bison because he was modeled after Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. But. Because of the fact that they didn't, that Capcom didn't want to get into a lawsuit, they did the name swap. Right, I do remember that. And because 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 of that, but when it comes to Dudley, he he tr- aside from the fact that he carries himself like a like a old like a English gentleman boxer, um, his more infamous thing is is um punish. He has a lot more. He focuses a lot more on counterattacking and punishing um, people's mistakes. Mm-hmm. Instead, instead of going all out offense, that's Sense. kind. Of, that's kind of what I mean by an aggressive tank. They have offense. They have offensive options, but it's more about taking advantage of of, of other people's mistakes rather than getting it. Rather than getting into the attack game themselves. Mm-hmm. So yeah, in Valor, that would be a counter build. Uh, mm-hmm. Counter tank build. Now, one of the, one of the things that that is really where Valor um, opens up the customization is the techniques, mm-hmm. and something I'm curious about because there, because I don't. It's been a while, so I don't. I don't recall if there was anything like this in in the in the book or any in this or any of these supplements. But do you have plans on putting in a, a segment of example um, techniques and ultimates? We do, have, we do walk through the build technique, and then we have the sample characters in the core book itself, so you can mm-hmm. see a number of sample characters that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like sample technique building, um, really, yeah, we just we release a bunch of characters and we show how we made their stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that is because the the 
um, technique building is the one is the one place where I could see I, I could see a bit of an, I could see a bit of the potential for analysis paralysis. Mm hmm. Yeah, Especially and that that's that that is the area that we've actually spent the most time trying to get, if not like easy, um, to make it the most open and the most. Uh, manageable um like we're working on uh independent standalone character designer and things like that mm -hmm. uh, the nice thing about techniques though is because you get so many points you can make quite a few different techniques so you do get a chance to really try a lot of things and uh, whenever you spend a technique point on a technique you can completely rewrite it if you so choose so that gives people a lot of flexibility to just try things out and if they don't like it they can um do other things with them Mm -hmm. um, but you are right that it, that is that is generally where we'll find a lot of people will struggle <clears> the most um, just because yeah there's so much that you can do with the system and I'm honestly fine with that I'd rather mm -hmm. more options than less yeah um, I'm I'm not I'm not saying put I'm not saying less options but 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 um, if it if it helps let me give let me give you a example of, of a similar game that has a, that has a technique system that's that is just as if not if not more if not more option heavy. That being Anima Beyond Fantasy. Oh yeah, uh, I am familiar and with that one. In that one, that and this was especially the case in the Dominus X set book, which focused all around, which which further expanded the key options. Um, it included several um, technique treats. That could that could that could be pulled that characters could pull from or bi or build their own at their mm -hmm. choosing, and get and giving the math for each for each of those um, trees, and that's what that's why I was curious that's why I was curious if um if like pr if like technique templates was some was something that had been considered for the future. Yeah, mo yeah. Mostly, what we'll do is we. I, I prefer to be more show don't tell, um, which is why I'll include tools and options for people to to like look at techniques and see what they look like. Part of it too with Valor is we do kind of prime people to go in certain directions with the technique creation because there are certain a lot of the modifiers in the book will have very specific stats that they're good at, which provides a natural starting point for a lot of players. If they're flipping through the mods, for example, trying to figure out what to put on a strength technique, and they see, oh, this this modifier to reposition things has a bonus for strength. Well, I should make that. So ha because all, all of the stats sort of have their own identity, that does help us kind of filter people's vision um, mm -hmm. in, in certain directions um, while they're still starting out. Um, that's also why you see that very, um, very detailed description of what happens with each character as they level up for the sample campaign, mm -hmm. uh, where we walk people through kind of the process so that they can see these characters and how they are customizing their techniques as they move forward. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> when it comes to now, when it came to the when it comes the other thing that I, that I'm definitely grateful for is the the fact that there's a cap of two when it comes to um, when it comes to flaws. So you so because of that you don't have as much of an issue of min maxing. It's technically that's not the cap, but we very intentionally kept the flaw section very low mm -hmm. on flaws, and we do cap skill points from flaws. Mm -hmm. Because we do, we want, we very specifically want people to not min max from flaws. We're also very measured in what we allow flaws to do. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you try and min max, you're not really going to get too much out of it. Um, but also, we're encouraging you not to do that because it's just, it's not really how we intended the game to be played. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm pretty comfortable with the fail safes we've put in place to just make sure that people aren't doing that too often. And I, off I don't often see people go very flaw heavy unless that concept is for someone who has a lot of these like very distinct weaknesses in which case it usually makes for a much more interesting character overall mm -hmm. now now valor has been valor has been out in the wild for a few years 
Uh, 2015 oh. is when we released. Mm-hmm. And after the pandemic, you know, it still feels like 2020, <coughs> but yeah, it's actually 2022. So it's been out for seven years. Oh God. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to be approaching the hundredth episode of one of my, po- of one of my podcast series in, in, a, in a few well, days. Congratulations. <laughs> so, t- so time, time can, time can certainly fly. And well, for, well, for me, um, I know I know that there's a difference between 2020 and now because because that because that difference was was about six inches. Yeah. St- during during the pandemic during all the lockdowns, I start I started working out again, and I ended up lo- I ended up losing like 80 pounds. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh. And I think for- I managed to drop about 50 pounds myself, but not not going hard into working out, just being healthier. Oh. I, I had I had done both. I would w- I would wake up I would wake up crazy early and bu- and bike for 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 like an hour straight. Oh, sometimes sometimes and once it got to, once it got cold, I I moved, I started using an in, I started using an indoor bike setup and would just use that as an excuse to um bit to binge watch anime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> while while bu- while biking and while the anime is playing, I don't I didn't stop. Oh, that that was that was the rule, which could get a little bit hellish after after a while. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I I, I would actually because we have a bike, um, so I would I would do much the same. But oh. we moved to a smaller place, and I don't have the bike set up right now, so I got to get that figured out. I wasn't doing spinning because the last time I did that, I felt like I was going to fucking die because spinning is is you're go- you're going full speed for long stretches of time. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of pro cyclists will do will do it. I am smart enough to know that I can't. I, yeah, I love... you, you really got to be careful with that kind of thing. Like I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. It's, it's good to have limits and mm-hmm. to understand those yeah. limits. But um, what what would be what would be some of the learning experience takeaways that you've had over the years with Valor? Uh, definitely the definitely obviously finding ways to simplify the building, which is why we're investing in character creators and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's hard enough to get someone into a new game that they've never played before. Uh, and because we do things a bit differently than a lot of other systems do, that's been figuring out how to properly market it and how to properly draw people into the project and get them interested in what you're doing has been a challenge at times. Uh, We're fortunate in that overall the reception is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Uh, The system more or less sells itself Mm -hmm. um, in that there are a lot of people who've been really looking for something like Valor all their lives and uh, being able to see their expression on their face when they find out that we exist and we've been here and they can buy our book um, is honestly very rewarding. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, in general, it's all about making things easier and more approachable for players, especially new players. So we mm-hmm. put a lot of focus into that, um, especially too, because like, <laughs> if we're being honest, Dungeons and Dragons owns and will for the conceivable future own like 90% of the market. So if you want to succeed in tabletop RPGs, you need to be reaching out to people who aren't already fans of tabletop RPGs because they're more likely than not only going to play Dungeons and Dragons and will never look at another game. Um, So part of that too for us has been trying to find other audiences, um, much more in kind of like just the general anime fandom. Um, people who may have tried D&D once or twice but not quite jive with it, um, grabbing some folks from, like, the LARP mm-hmm. spheres, uh, you know, trying to trying to just open up that market and, and convince yes. everyone else that our game is cool and that if you want to do anime, you should be playing our game instead of any other game. Um, I remember years ago, somebody, somebody had asked me how they, how they could use... Um, D- how they could use D and D to run a Digimon game, and at the, this was around the time that Frontier was on the air. Mm-hmm. And I had I had said, "Why?" And I t- because 
I said, I said you, you probably could, but you're going to house rule so much, you're going to have a house rule book so big it may as well be another game. And in that mm-hmm. regard, you'd be in good company. Um, yeah, that's that's typical. People always want to try and run anime style stuff in D anD D, and it's not really well suited for it. Let me tell you about the Tome of <laughs> Battle. <laughs> mm-hmm. I and liked that book. the the book The book that got me thrown off of six forums in the span of a week. All be all because all because I had the wrong opinion. That, that was opinion. a fun book. I liked that book. If I had to play 3.5, I would only do it if I could use Tome Battle. Um, I had said, I had said at, because I would, because people, because people in some of the, in some of the forums I was, I was in were aghast at the idea of, of, in, of integrating anime and video games into D and D. Um, it's honestly not even that. It's more wuxia than anything else. It is, it is, but they didn't know. But they didn't know about. They didn't know about wuxia. In fact, in fact, um, they. Are, I was already on the bad side with the, with a lot of them because they they said you could use D anD D to run any fantasy system. Nice, and, and my resort has always been, okay. What is the what is the mo, what is the most common way to equip a fighter? Sword and board. Okay, how are you going to do that in a culture like Japan where shields aren't a thing? Well, except for one turtle shell kind of shield in Okinawa, and that's that's a, that calling that a stretch is like saying is like saying that Reed Richards doing yo is doing yoga by having him drawn and quartered. Well, D and D has had a lot of Asian focused supplements. Um, I. In addition to my other work, I do work with Asians Represent. We are a uh, Asians and tabletop RPG focused group, and we have a robust set of criticisms about how D&D has handled kind of our cultural content, but they do um, do it. That is that is definitely a thing that they do. The the point that the point that I was that I was getting at when I would when I would mm-hmm. call people out like that was was the was to show how narrow their understanding of fantasy was that and that's yeah that's very correct i've um i've used the term the tolkien melting pot because mm-hmm. i got nothing against tolkien but i was res- i've always resented the idea of of um you of using that as the default and this isn't this isn't even a thing about cultures because I remember being on forums and seeing people talk about Planescape Torment and how it was too weird to be fantasy. <clears throat> and love to hear their take on Chronicles of Narnia. Um, <laughs> pretty, yeah, pre- pretty much, or or some of or some of the really weird sci-fi fantasy stuff in the pulp era. Even even by modern standards, it got really weird. Yeah, the, that's always kind of been the concept of fantasy is having that niche to get kind of kind of fantastic, if you might say. Mm-hmm. Oh. And <clears throat> but the but something but something that I said that really got under people's skin and years later I've been I've been validated was you are going to you're going to have a whole generation of players who did not grow up with Tolkien, did not grow up with Moorcock, did not grow up with Lieber. They probably grew up with, with Slayers, with Harry Potter, with, with, uh, with, other, with other forms of science fiction and fantasy. Uh, although Tolkien is still going to be great in the consciousness because of the Lord of the Rings uh, series. But yeah, it's... Like, not not a lot of people, for example, are looking at Jack Vance anymore. And D&D's whole spellcasting system was based off of it. You want, you want to know what I find funny? The Dying, Ur- the Dying Earth RPG doesn't even use that system. Oh, yeah, the um, Dark Sun. No, not, not Dark Sun. The Jack Vance's Dying Earth RPG from Pelgrane. Ah. It... D- it only uses the system insofar as having ridiculously named spells. Mm-hmm. But everybody does that. Even 13th Age has a, te- 
as a talent for the wizard called, called Vance's polysyllabilic ex, um, exaltation or something or something. I can't remember the exact name, but basically, basically a talent for for those who want their spells to be more Vance like by going with ridiculously ridiculously long names. <laughs> so but, sounds about right. <clears throat> and well, the the character of Rincewind in Discworld is meant to take the piss out of Jack Vance's work. Because he is... This a, world is very <laughs> fertile ground for all kinds of fun parodic, uh... My, my, co- my colleague calls Discworld the first true crack fic. Mm. Which, he's not wrong. <laughs> and it has the best incarnation of the Grim Reaper that there will ever be. The, the character of death is beloved by many. Mm-hmm. But what for me, for me personally, I, I consider myself lucky because I've had a ridiculously easy time introducing people to different games. Mm-hmm. Um, part of I'd imagine part of it is just is just being able to be more convincing when you're taller than everybody else. But <laughs> It's but well ever ever since I started this channel I've I've gone with the attitude of we're on a mission from God and that mission right. is expand is expand the damn hobby because mm-hmm. nobody else was doing it the way I wanted it to, the way I wanted it to be done so I figure I'll do it myself. <laughs> hey, you know, being being a big guy like yourself, that 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 people do tend to listen to you, so might as well uh, use those advantages for for something fun, right? Well, it's, it certainly beats being asked to get something off the top shelf for the um, for the umpteenth time. Although, although that is very important too, and we thank you for your service. Well, so, sometimes people sometimes people will come up to me and say, "Monk, can you get this thing off the top shelf?" And then I'll say yes and continue working. And you probably can figure out where where the mistake was made in that situation. They didn't. They didn't ask me. They didn't ask me if I if I would do it. They asked if I could do it. Certainly can, but <clears throat> also they didn't. Also, they didn't say please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, always an important factor. Yeah. But when it <clears throat> now, when it comes to the, when it comes to this. Oh, when it comes to the se- this second printing. Oh. Mm-hmm. Now, I did see on the Kickstarter that there is the option for the digital edition. Oh. Correct. Yes. So there, there's a couple of questions I have. I have for that. Just give, just given my background. Um, one of one of those is the is um is the is the version is the digital edition that's as part of that Kickstarter the the same as what's currently available on Drive Through RPG or is that or no. is there going to be a or is there is there going to be an updated version for those who already had purchased the original? So we've done we've done a proper update of the book. Um, so all of the I'm not going to say how many pages of Rada because I don't mm. actually know because it started to just kind of get depressing. <laughs> um, turns out being an indie studio, you will mess up a lot of things and. Uh, I, I shouldn't be embarrassed about it, but I am. Um, so that will be that will all be fixed up. Uh, all of the errata, all of the rules changes, everything will be in the new digital edition. Which, by the way, I, I should mention as well, because um, we did do we did do some announcements, but not everyone I think has seen it. Uh, anyone who already owns the book, we are going to be sending out. Um, free digital updates to everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if you never bought the digital edition before, like if you only bought the hardcover at a convention, we'll have a system set up where you, if you can just like snap a picture of your hardcover, then we'll shoot you a digital edition. Um, but it will be updated. Um, we'll be updating the creators' names. Uh, both both of us are transgender, um, myself and Quinn. Uh, so that's obviously important to us as well. Uh, but mostly, yeah, it'll be rules, fixes, errata, um, the, the healing fix being one of the big ones and that we overtuned healing when we first uh, made the game. So that's mm-hmm. been significantly nerfed. Yeah. 
Um, believe believe me, if I if I was at a convention and where where you were, you you would have known because everybody'd be everybody be running away saying, "Help! It's Blackzilla." All jokes. Everybody's got them. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and well, <laughs> even e- even when even when I tr- even when I try not to even when I try not to be int- intimidating. Well, you've got it's a you have you have a six foot six guy in, in a convention hall with a bunch of five foot nothings. Yeah, that's just that. That's gonna that's gonna happen, you know. <laughs> You roll with the punches. Oh well, one year I rolled. I rolled with it so that so I dressed as Darth Vader just for maximum irony. Very nice. <laughs> um, com- complete with the complete with the breathing sound effect just to just to add a little bit to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <clears throat> now, what would you? I realize that these things are always in flux, but what would you be shooting for as far as a release date for, at the very least, the digital edition? Because, well, oh, the print um, version is going to be bullshit. So, so long, so long as my designer does finish it up, which apparently he is working on it, and he like we're so we're so close. Mm-hmm. Um, I, as I understand, he intends to get it all squared away this week. Um, he's, he's, he's had some other concerns, so he hasn't been able to finish it up, but like, we just need a few more pages wrapped mm-hmm. up and like indexing and stuff like that. But assuming all goes well, you're good. You'll get the digital edition yeah. right when the Kickstarter ends. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, in and then the print edition mm-hmm. should follow and yeah. probably closer to four months, mm-hmm. which I'd say is about fair. And that's. That's of course presu- that's of course presuming that pr- that um there's no printer issues because everybody's having printer issues these days. Like I said, I norm normal lead times tend to sit around three months, including mm-hmm. shipment. I'm anticipating closer to four, or maybe five. Um, I've worked with the printer. I got a book out from them during the pandemic, uh, our best in class supplement, which is mm-hmm. also available on the Kickstarter. Uh, but um. So that I'm not super worried about them dropping lead time too much, but the shipping has been especially difficult. Mm. So um, I anticipate some delays, but it won't take too long. Expect the worst, hope for the best. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, with that said, I do I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones to. Come to come all the way up to my temple and enjoy the particular bit of crazy that happens around here. Well, of course, and thank you for having me. I appreciate the invitation. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I appreciate our- it. I'm, I'm sure there will be plenty of occasion because I'm mm-hmm. I am I'm a very ambitious woman, so I want mm-hmm. to do a lot of a lot of new products. Uh, our our current. Kickstarter stretch goal is getting a text only version of the monster book that I've been wanting to push out. So Mm -hmm. hopefully we'll have a proper Kickstarter for the hardcover of that, um, to come, uh, maybe sometime next year, even if things go Mm -hmm. well, Mm -hmm. I'll certainly be, I'll certainly be keeping an eye out. And of, of course there's always plenty of ideas that I, that I can cook up in this crazy mind of mine, but of course, and, but as I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Mm-hmm. And of course, a sincere thanks to everyone who took the time to took the time out of their schedule to come all the way to the temple and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>